From Studio 1A in Tampa, Florida, comes a talk show that really feels your pain and tells you like it is. We love America and all that freedom-loving Americans want to protect. Live from coast to coast and on your radio, it's For the People with Keith Allen. We'll help you survive this thing called life with For the People. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. America. I am Keith Allen, and so glad that you joined us for this Thursday, October the 12th, 2017. I am a very satisfied talk show host, and I can tell you why. A friend of mine dropped me off. It's got to be. Perhaps one of the best shepherd's pie, and I have not had one of these bad boys in a long time, and it just, (laughs) it just was unbelievably delicious, and I ate a little early. Uh, It just was uh, warmed up, it was perfect, Um, uh, Yucatan, uh, whatever they call them, eucla, I I don't know, it's a special potato they use i i don't even know all the the breeds of it but she's uh, uh somewhat of a cook and uh just to think that she's a she runs a uh, big automotive company that she owns with her uh, her husband but anyways ridiculous and the only thing missing is the vino but i'll have to settle for my for the people cup with a rather delicious cup of house blend starbucks coffee I brew my own, so it's a lot cheaper than actually going to Starbucks and uh, buy it online. It's discounts. I know a lot of you say, yeah, but you said you were on a frugal budget. I am, but we just do it on the cheap here as, as much as we can here. But some some things like toilet paper, I, y- there's some things that you just can't compromise with. Toilet paper would be one of those, and then coffee, you just have to write it. Maxwell House. It just doesn't cut it. Not for the broadcaster. Broadcasters have to have something that has much more of a a kick to it. And after enjoying this tremendous shepherd's pie, least I could do is wash it down with something very special. And I'm doing that. Am I making you hungry? I don't know all the ingredients in. I know there must have been some ground beef. I don't know if there was some turkey put in there, but the... Or a little sausage. I I just, I don't know. But it was the best that I've ever had. Is my friend Irish? I I don't know. There there could be some Irish in there. It is is a, uh, yeah, it's an Irish treat. But, man, you can enjoy it. And you got to serve it piping hot. And that's why the vino, washing that down with some cool vino, or even room temperature would have been okay there. Uh, Defense Secretary James Mattis, he's not very happy with NBC. Because NBC, they just cannot control themselves. And you wonder why. You wonder why Donald Trump calls the media fake news. I mean, if Defense Secretary James Mattis is rebuking NBC, there must be a good reason. And there is a good reason, folks. Because they're going off about the U.S. nuclear arsenal, about how Donald Trump wants to increase the U.S. nuclear arsenal tenfold after a meeting with defense officials in July. The recent reports that the president called for an increase in the U.S. nuclear arsenal, Mattis says is absolutely false, according to military.com. He says, this kind of erroneous reporting is, I quote, irresponsible. Very irresponsible. It's not just Americans that get told this bill of goods as if people need to be on edge even more because of all the tensions around the world with North Korea and Iran, ISIS, etc. That we're just going to go ahead and we're going to stockpile it more. Is just a bunch of BS. And from what I understand from back channels and uh, going beyond the headlines, which I advise all our listeners to always do, 
because you get a fuller perspective. You actually get the truth. Imagine that. You get the truth. Uh, Donald Trump wanted to make sure that all of our our nukes were up to par. They were actually working. They were manned. They were ready to go. But somebody, somebody's been leaking stuff. But this time, Matt has said, there's no truth to that. We're not increasing the amount of nukes that we have. We have plenty of nukes. There's no shortage of those. We have them. But NBC, they, they just, for ratings. And, and the reason I, I, I my, uh, they, they are liars, that's for sure. But I think one of the biggest reasons is, is the ratings are so bad that they have to come up with the fake news to attract viewership or at least hold what viewers they have. And the viewers they have, largely speaking, are snowflakes. They don't know any better. They don't go beyond the headlines. Whatever NBC says, they believe. They're parakeets. They're parakeets. They have parakeet brains. Uh, Maybe they didn't start out that way. None, None of us do. But they're feeding the parakeets. <laughs> Don't you like that? That's what they're doing. They're feeding the parakeets. This negativity and, more importantly, this garbage. Why do you think Donald Trump goes on the Twitter sphere and talks about fake news coming out of NBC? At one point, he said that he thought it was appropriate to challenge their license. He says, bad for country. Now. I tell you, I don't try to make it too much of a habit of this, but occasionally when I'm in my car, because I have to drop my daughter off at school in the morning, I'll tune in to one of these national broadcasts, and I hear Glenn Beck going off today about Donald Trump and the FCC, about how Donald Trump can't take the license away from NBC and he should know better. Donald Trump says stuff to make a point. The point is that NBC, with putting out this garbage and these lies, they probably shouldn't be broadcasting. They shouldn't be spewing the lies. He's just to the bigger picture of what's going on here, making it a point. And by the way, it'd be their affiliates, yes, that have the license, the, the, the actual origination from Rockefeller Center. Uh they can just continue broadcasting that stuff. And it's unconstitutional, but it, <laughs> he's making a point to the bigger picture. Don't be small-minded. We have enough people out there that are small-minded. Personally, I'm not offended by the tweets. It's the tweets that got him elected. And with all the Quinnipiac polls and polls done showing the low approval ratings of the president, and that he's down on this and down on that. He's making headway in traction with the NFL because now the commissioners say these have to these guys have to stand. They all have to stand. Uh, and plenty of other good things have come out from the tweets. Uh, it doesn't bother me. We live in a a different world. We live in a digital media. And Donald Trump said, you know, he's going to continue being himself. He's not going to be anybody else. And I don't think any of his base wants to be anything different. Uh, To me, it doesn't offend me at all. It really doesn't. I mean, because that's who he is. I'd rather have Barack Obama. He was who he was for eight years. Uh, Let Trump be Trump. Let Trump be Trump. Look, good things are happening. I believe that health care is going to improve. I truly do. Whether he does it through executive measures, looks like it's already a done deal. And that there's, there's more freedom. There's the tax cuts that will help the middle class not hurt it. And if, you know what, and the big deal about big corporations getting tax breaks, and so if they do, so if the big companies get tax breaks, They always have. But who do they employ? Millions of people. As long as they employ people, 
As long as they generate money for the economy, they're generating tax revenue. It helps the economy. It's a win-win situation, you idiots. The Democrats know this. The Democrats know this, but a lot of their base apparently doesn't because they buy into these stupid PSAs or commercials by these super PACs and put these uh, for this, this, this organization, that organization. It's bad for the middle class, but it only benefits the rich. You ignoramus. If it wasn't for the rich, you wouldn't have a job. If you didn't have the powerful, you wouldn't have a job. Thank God that somebody risked their savings, their life, their money, their treasure. So you could come into work today. That's how America was built. That's what drives the engine. And all Donald Trump wants to do is crank that engine hotter to provide more jobs, more better paying jobs to stop uh, allowing businesses to not be able to hire more and offer some health care coverage for them. They don't have to cut the hours because that's what they had dur- uh, during Obama, making it very hard. That's what Obamacare's done. That's what his tax code's done. Is all of it perfect? Probably not. Probably not. Corporations, what are they supposed to do? They're supposed to make money. Employees pay taxes. They get a little some tax breaks for hiring so many people and doing so many things, let it, for the land that they use, et cetera, et cetera. Let it be. Let it be. If they're doing something wrong, then they should be charged. And that's the final thing. That's my takeaway from all of it, really. There's just too many things to get upset about in the, in, in the great scheme of things. Uh, it, it, it amazes me, though, and uh, things are improving, but not, in, in my opinion, and I know it frustrates middle America. You know who you are. You, you know, the, we see the numbers and um, with Wall Street and these huge earnings. We're just uh, hoping and praying that people's salaries will increase, uh, that there will be more money available. And I think that this the tax breaks are going to be able to allow people, for the first time in a long time, to be able to open up businesses that they've been wanting to do for a long time and not being stifled, to be able to do it, to be able to really attain the American dream. So it's not a distant memory, that it actually is a reality. And that's the biggest problem with this the tax code that it is right now. It doesn't allow people to be able to dream, to be able to build for tomorrow. So personally, and with millions of other Americans that know this is going to be a good deal for them, we're looking forward to it. You know, and if some fat cats uh, with the big companies, they make a little bit more money, I don't care. Just as long as they're opening up their doors and hiring more people, creating more stimulus for the economy. And more money means more tax revenue. And that's a good thing. It's a win-win situation. But you don't have to strangle the American people to get it. When there's plenty of incentive to be able to hire people where things are really cooking, baby. And that's what Donald Trump is trying to do as a great CEO, America's CEO now, not just for the Trump organization. He's not running the Trump organization. He's running the United States of America. And he wants us to do well. Who doesn't want us to do well is the MSNBCs, the NBC the liberal media that will continue being contentious. People say, well, you know, if Donald Trump would just lay off the Twitter, if he would just stop calling him the fake news, they wouldn't do this anymore. Do you honestly believe that? Do you believe that? Were you around for Ronald Reagan? Do you think that they treated Ronald Reagan with respect? The liberal media called him an idiot, dunderhead, constantly through his whole term. 